Hi, my name is Sangmin Park and I teach economics at a German University of Applied Sciences. In this video series, I will show you a concept for creating one-take teaching videos, that is, teaching videos without the need for editing and post-production. The first video will be about my concept, in the second video I will talk about technical equipment, meaning hardware, and in the, th in the third video I will talk in detail about software. Let's begin with my concept. Here's how I will proceed. I will begin with a short introduction why I think this topic matters and why this is something worth talking about. Then I will briefly show you my setup, the way I produce teaching videos. Naturally, I will conclude this video with a few closing thoughts and limitations of my approach. All right, let's get into it. In this first part, I will explain to you the basic problem that I saw and which led me to develop my own concept. But before we get into it, I need to preface some things. This contribution is not about whether or not teaching videos are useful or not. That is a totally different discussion and one that I have concluded for my purposes. I am personally convinced that teaching videos are great, so to speak, a good idea. But you have to realize is uh, what you have to realize is that videos are just a great tool to have, not something that completely replaces any material or method that you would traditionally use in the classroom. If you are interested to find finding out how I use teaching videos in my classrooms, let me know in the comment section below and I might make a video on it. Secondly, I am just showing you the way I do it. I do not claim this is uh, the perfect way to do it, neither is it set in stone. I adjust my workflow almost on a weekly basis. With that out of the way, let's get into the subject matter. The way I see it, there are two prominent ways in which teaching videos are produced today. The first is probably the oldest, let us call it lecture recording. And the second one is the one which I think is the most widely practiced one at the moment. Let's call this one screencast with editing. The first one, lecture recording. Basically, the lecturer does his or her normal lecture in the classroom and someone records the whole thing. Usually this is done by third persons who bring along the equipment needed for this. Often, the resulting video includes the slides used by the lecturer and a close-up of the lecturer themselves. After the lecture is finished, the third person renders the video and sends it to the lecturer or uploads it to a video server. This approach does result in rather well-produced videos and is especially useful for conference and workshop presentations. If you want to see how this looks when it's done really well, check out the link below um, to the project lecture to go at the University of Hamburg. However, I personally do not like this approach for regular teaching. One reason is didactical. The video you get from this is nothing but a canned version of your lecture, and while useful, this limits you severely in using teaching videos to complement your regular lecture. Another reason is autonomy. Uh, personally, I do not like being dependent on other people for creating my teaching videos, and that is why I prefer to be able to create my own videos. The second prominent approach is screencasting with editing. For a screencast, the lecturer typically records his or her voice and combines this narration with images of the corresponding presentation into a video. Putting the audio and the visual parts together is done in video editing software. Many people use Camtasia, which is basically kind of an easy video, ed video editing software developed specifically for teaching videos. What I like about this approach is that it allows you to produce a wide variety of teaching videos beyond the simple lecture. It could be a short video explaining the intuition behind some mathematical formula. It could be a short video giving a real life example for some theoretical conjecture. If used well, this results in rather high quality teaching videos. What I find very appealing, of appealing about this approach is that on the most basic level, all you need is a decent laptop hardware wise to produce a teaching video. The big reason why I cannot use this approach regularly is that on top of preparing a good concept, um, script and visuals for your teaching video, you also need to edit your video before you can make it available. If you have ever dabbled in video editing, you know how time consuming that can be. This problem leads me directly into my approach, which basically boils down to producing a screencast without the need for editing. The basic approach for doing this is taken from live TV broadcasts, where you also have video content with relatively high production value, 
but without post-production. The way this works in TV is that you have a control room full of people making sure the, broadca the broadcast runs as planned. Naturally, this is not feasible in the context of higher education teaching videos, both in terms of manpower and in terms of technical equipment. <coughs> Luckily, the combination of modern computers with appropriate software allows the lecturer to basically become a one-person control room while recording the teaching video. At first glance, this approach is very similar to the screencast with editing. Again, all you need on the very basic level is a decent laptop produ to produce your teaching video. You also need a concept, a script, suitable visuals, but you do not need to edit the video output, instead uploading it instantly to share it with your students. The big difference to the screencast with editing is that I use open source live streaming software called Open Broadcaster Software, OBS in short. OBS is basically a control room that, um, um, that you can c control by yourself while recording the video. The great thing about OBS is that it allows me to set the design of my teaching video even before I record it. Let's look at this screenshot to see what I mean by this. The big part in the middle is a preview of the scene I am planning to record. As you can see, here I am including a logo of my organization in the top left and a Creative Commons logo in the bottom right. And in the top right, there is a small shot of my face that is recorded with a webcam. And the greater part of the video scene is naturally composed of my lecture slides or whatever I want to show during my teaching video. Once I have prepared the scene as I would like it to look, I can start recording and as soon as I stop recording, OBS saves a video file which of course includes the audio part of my recording. If you need a visual analogy, think of a play director who sets the theater stage before the performance and records the performance on stage. For most teaching video scenarios, OBS is more than enough to produce a decent looking video. And by the way, all videos in this series are recorded in one take respectively using OBS. Another fantastic feature is that you can switch between scenes on the fly while recording. In the third video of this series, I will show you in more detail what OBS can do and how I use it. The two features of OBS that I have mentioned provide me with enough creative possibilities to produce just about any teaching video I personally require. The most obvious type of video is the one shown here, which is basically recording my voice while showing lecture slides. That covers more than 90% of my teaching videos. But I can just as easily produce a software tutorial as you will see in the third video, or some handwritten math, equa math equations, or switch between all of these within the same video. I'm not sure whether you can tell, but I'm a big fan of OBS. Um, of course, I'm not being paid to advertise OBS and there are also al alternatives, which I will link to below. I just like OBS best after having, after having tried all of those alternatives. That is all. All right, I think the abstract concept of how I produce videos should be clear by now. And let's mention a few limitations. First problem is that um, because you are trying to record a video in one take, you do need a more detailed concept of your teaching video. I don't see this one as critical because the extra time you spend working on your concept is probably less than the time you save by not having to edit your video. The second limitation I know fr um, from experience is bloopers. While bloopers are also a, a problem with any other kind of teaching video, they are more annoying in a one-take scenario, of course. I deal with this problem by mostly recording short teaching videos, which makes it easier to re-record. Or sometimes, if it's not a really bad blooper, you can just leave it in the video. You are human after all. <coughs> the next limitation I see is with longer recordings. If you are planning on producing a longer teaching video, it really helps to be able to record short sequences and combine them into a final product in your video editor. The way I get around this problem is by, for the most part, avoiding longer teaching videos. And if for some reason I need to record a whole lecture or a longer presentation, I can always resort to recording parts of the video in succession and uploading them in the right order into a YouTube playlist. The final limitation that I see is that a video editing software gives you a lot more room to incorporate visualizations into your teaching videos. Um, sorry, that was a blooper. Um, 
gives you a lot more room to incorporate visualizations. Um, in a one text scenario, I am mostly limited to the visualizations that I use in PowerPoint, plus any handwriting I use in my videos. All right, that was the first video in the series on producing one tech teaching videos. Like this video if you liked it, dislike if you didn't like it, leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.